All right. Well, it is the top of the hour. We're going to give people a couple more minutes to get in, and then we'll get started. But hey, everybody, great to have you here. Really excited to talk to you about AI part messaging. I see some people have already let us know where they're calling in from. Wow, we have somebody from Brazil. That's super exciting. Obviously, a few people from Madison here. All right, and I think that's all our staff is on as well. Okie dokie. Uh, Hannah, are we ready to get started? We are ready. All right, well, hey everybody, welcome to our event on AI powered messaging. We're really excited to have you here. Uh, this event, by the way, will be recorded and we will be sending out a full copy of our presentation, all the notes that we shared with you throughout the event, uh, everything that took place in our Q&A chat, um, and anything else that we shared resources-wise. So if you do miss anything, you have to step up for a second, grab a cup of coffee, if the dog is like going crazy, no worries, we got your back, and we will be sharing everything with you um, that is um, covered at this event. Uh, that being said, it does take us a little bit of time to go through um, all the material that we presented and package it up right so that way you guys can get it in one complete neat package. Um, so that being said, expect it either um, two to three days from now, so next Monday, next Tuesday is when you'll be getting that. I know sometimes people ask whether or not they'll have it next day. We usually don't have that quick uh, the turnaround time, but we will be sending it out to you early next week. Uh, that being said, the way this event works is we do have our presentation, but during the presentation, we also have our Q&A chat. So if you do have a question on anything that is going to be covered during this event, or you just have a question that pops up in your head on something we talked about, and you want to ask one of our experts that's actually in our Q&A chat, there's a little bubble at the bottom of your screen that has a little question mark in it. If you click it, that will take you to our Q&A chat. You can go ahead and type your question there and one of our experts will get to it when they can. Uh, we do our best to answer every single question that does come into our Q&A chat. Sometimes we can't get to all of them. So if we don't get to yours, it's not that we didn't like it, it's just that we do have limited capacity and sometimes we just can't get an answer out um, as quickly as we'd like to. That being said, we'll do our best to try and any question that is asked in our Q&A chat will also be included question and answer in our post event summary. So. Don't worry, if you answer, ask a question, it gets answered, it doesn't get lost into the ether, we'll be sending that to you in our post-event content as well. Um, with that being said, we're gonna have our presentation. During that presentation, we will have a brief demo of our product, and then we're gonna go ahead and shift to our live Q&A. Uh, the live Q&A consists of questions that a lot of you submitted to us in advance in our registration. We really do appreciate you submitting those questions. And we chose questions out of the many that were submitted that we felt best represented the general asks that you all had um, about AI-powered messaging. So if you do see your question being answered, thanks for that question. And if you don't see it, it doesn't mean that your question was bad or, or we didn't like it. We just felt that other questions better represented the general asks of the community. Uh, with that being said, I'm gonna go ahead and pass it off to Hannah, who's gonna get us started. Uh, Hannah, let's, Let's let's do it. Let's talk about some AI powered messaging. All right. Yeah, I'm excited to do it. Hi, everybody. My name is Hannah Krivis, and I'm really excited to talk to you about how your business can help design the right conversational service that suits your business needs with messaging. So for us, technology is fall, like evolving faster than ever, and at the forefront of that is the evolution of AI. It's no longer just about keeping up, it's also about staying ahead, and AI has transformed how we interact with the world around us, with tools like ChatGPT delivering translations, feedback, even complex summaries within seconds. This instant access to information has really set a new gold standard for customer expectations. And today, customers aren't just looking for fast answers, they expect those answers to be tailored to their unique needs and context. And the convenience and personalization that AI offers has become the new benchmark. And with AI raising the bar, customers now expect more than ever, speed, convenience, and personalization. And they're essential, but many businesses are struggling to meet those heightened expectations. Conventional support options like chat, phone, email are falling short for their customers. So with only 39% of customers saying that they can connect with support quickly and easily. 
And interactions are also kind of lacking that personalization aspect with 62% of consumers believing companies could do better. And meanwhile, rising support volumes are stretching teams thin with over 80% of leaders expecting a five times increase in the coming years. And these challenges to us make it really clear that businesses need to rethink how they approach customer support to meet the new standards set by AI. But unfortunately, there's a really big disconnect right now be behind how companies perceive their performance and how customers are actually experiencing it. 84% of CX leaders rate their speed at responding to, responding to customers as excellent, where only 39% of customers say that they are able to reach customer service quickly and easily. This gap to us really highlights a critical misalignment in understanding what customers are truly needing and expect. Bridging this disconnect can be really crucial for your business. It's not just about approving response times. It's also about aligning internal teams with the real world experiences of your customers. So to bridge that gap between customer expectations and service delivery, Send Us Messaging offers a really versatile solution. It enables you to connect with customers across their preferred channels, whether that's on your website, your mobile app, social platforms, or gaming apps. So with Zendesk Messaging, you can deliver fast, personalized service no matter how the conversation unfolds, whether that's like in real time or over hours across multiple channels. It's all about meeting customers where they are and exceeding their expectations while you're at it. And messaging fits really seamlessly into your channel strategy and works alongside other channels from one unified platform. So when we're talking about messaging we also have to consider what it's not like unlike a voice channel messaging actually allows for you to have ongoing communication so your customers can engage at their own pace and unlike email messaging provides real-time or near real-time interactions allowing for quicker resolution and a more conversational experience and unlike your uh, help center messaging offers a personalized two-way communication where customers can ask follow-up questions receive tailored responses rather than searching through static content and some of the benefits that I've kind of already covered today, but let's also jump through them really quickly. Send us messaging doesn't just connect you with customers, it enhances the entire experience. It offers convenience by meeting customers on their preferred channels with tailored interactions. It provides next level personalization using customer context and rich media to create more meaningful conversations. And you also get flexibility and control, managing all your interactions from one place. And plus, there's a lot of efficiency gains, centralizing workflows like ticket routing, streamlining operations, and cutting costs. With Zenith Messaging, you're not just communicating, you're delivering better outcomes for both your customers and your business. And now let's break it down into a few different levels, because when we're considering messaging or any new product that's introdu introduced, you have to consider that there's almost three stages in adopting. And AI automation is very deeply integrated into messaging. For the most optimized AI-powered messaging, you will track toward it in stages. So we broke it down into three parts so it can be a little bit more easy for you. And you can replicate on the first stage and elevate your live chat experience. Second, you can enhance your customer service with social messaging, and you can accelerate AI to scale and optimize workflows. So let's now go one by one through those. First, let's explore how, <laughs> sorry if you can hear my doorbell. Let's explore how Zendesk helps you in your live chat to the next level. We enable you to meet customers where they are, web, mobile, social, media, even gaming apps. And this omni-channel presence ensures you're always accessible. You can also design conversation flows, tailored to your top customer issues, and support needs. Customers can create messaging experiences that reflect your brand's personality and business hours, and you can use rich, customizable formats to showcase your brand throughout the interaction. So with Send Us and with messaging, you're not just replicating live chat, you're elevating the entire experience. On the second stage or second level of this, when you're enhancing, you're enhancing your customer service. You're expanding by meeting customers where they are on the preferred social and messaging channels, centralizing all of their requests in one place and giving you access to powerful CX workflows like SLA management and automation. And this really helps you streamline your operations by allowing you to centrally manage agent skills and capacity, providing a seamless experience to customers, allowing them to start, pause, resume conversations across multiple channels. 
And with the ability to proactively engage customers and their design on flexible conversation flows, you can also better fit their preferences and their needs. Now the third, this is what this event is titled about. It's all about our AI powered messaging. So to do this, you have to accelerate your support even further by automating more conversations with AI. You can provide 24 seven availability through AI agents, reducing wait times and costs. You can leverage AI for more efficient triage, routing, staffing, and resolutions for common inquiries. And you can maintain a high bar for quality across human and AI interactions. And this really allows you to free up your human agents to focus on the more complex issues that require a personal attention. And by embracing AI-powered automation, you can take your customer support to the next level of speed, efficiency, and responsiveness. So in short, AI with Zendesk Messaging scales your support efficiently and improves the customer experience. So I'm really excited. Thank you so much for listening to me drone on about how great messaging is. And let's actually see it in action. So I'm going to turn it over to Andre, who will help us see a fully optimized version of AI-powered messaging, which is basically the third level that we just talked through. All right. So this is a uh, AI-enabled messaging demo for Zendesk. And we'll kind of, um, looking at my screen here, we'll see the end user experience on the left side. And the right side will be the agent experience. And I'll kind of uh, point back and forth. But the reason I'm recording it this way is it should allow us to actually see both uh, perspectives at the same time while an agent is uh, helping an end user. So on the left, we are looking at Collective. It is a demo site that we have built. And it is a fake customer that deals with um, tax issues. And so uh, as an end user, normally what I would do is I would go through the help center, try and find the right article. Um, and if it's a little long, maybe I need to find the right section to get me the right information. Um, now this presents two options, right? Uh, firstly, I have to actually get to this help center. So if I'm on a different website or a different channel like Facebook or WhatsApp, um, that can be a little bit difficult to um, come all the way here, right? Additionally, I have to parse through all the information to figure out what is useful to me. So what we're actually gonna do is we're gonna see how our AI enabled messaging can kind of help with this. I'm gonna go ahead and click on the widget here. And as I do that, uh, the AI is gonna greet me. When I am discussing things with it, I could type something like maybe, um, how should I get started? What this is gonna do is uh, the AI is going to analyze all the articles in my help center. And it's not gonna just give me a link to the article that it thinks might answer my question, but it's actually gonna point me to the exact point in the article that it thinks might be able to quickly resolve my statement, right? Um, and again, for context, um, if this is, uh, contextualized differently, or um, it, I want to read more. As an end user, I also have the link here right under it, so I can go to that article, read more about it, and figure out what else I need. Now, my client here, John, is a little bit worried about the upcoming tax season. So I'm going to say that, yeah, that was exactly what we were looking for, um, but he's still a little uneasy. Right, so we're gonna ask another question and say, um, I think I'd like to talk to an agent about my uh, tax submission. Now, again, a big thing here is uh, I don't need to know exactly what our um, keywords are or specific terms, right? That is the advantage of an AI like this. It actually will analyze all of the words and um, I don't need to create specific workflows around uh, the tax keywords or a specific product. It'll kind of understand that I need to speak to a human and I might ask that a bunch of different ways, but the sentiment and um, idea of it every time will kind of 
push through and it'll allow it to um, hit a lot more of these different scenarios than if I, as an admin, try to think up of every different keyword that someone could use. Um, now it's telling me that I have an article uh, around how I can reach out to the team, which is great. Um, but let's say that um, I don't wanna leave the widget, right? I might be on Facebook, WhatsApp, or even the website, and um, I don't wanna leave this experience. So instead, um, it's gonna offer me to talk to a human, right? And again, this is completely configurable by your admins. So if you want to have an easier time getting to an agent and uh, try to deflect a little bit less um, or more, that is definitely something that is uh, an option here. I'm gonna have the widget say that we're gonna talk to a human and I'm gonna start putting in my details. Now, John, we'll use characters. There we go. John is actually going to um, put in all of his information. Um, Jay Smith at demo.com here. And one of the most important parts here is that the AI can also act as a way to gather and process information, right? So if I want to ask for something like a customer ID, um, user ID, department, whatever that field might be, what I can then do is I can take this unique identifier and as we create tickets with it on the back end, we can also populate uh, a lot of information around what that user's uh, information is what their entitlements are, right? Maybe they're a VIP user and I need to send them to a different uh, team or things like maybe they have a different SLA as part of their contract, right? And so as I send this through, what we'll see is that um, the bot will kind of create the ticket. Um, and as an agent, I will have, uh, because of where I'm assigned in my groups and the queues, the chat or message in this case will come to me and I'll be able to answer it. Now, as soon as I grab it, um, we're gonna open up and see a couple of things. Uh, the first thing is I have access to see the entire history of what the bot discussed with the end user, but that might take me a little while to read, right? So what I could do instead is I could actually ask the AI here to summarize my conversation. And it can do this by saying, hey, John just wants to talk about his tax submission, right? Um, the bot advised him that, uh, you know, there were lots of different places to contact, um, but he decided to uh, make the contact through the widget and he provided these details. Now, um, once I have that, I have a couple of other bits of information that I can um, use here as well. Things like um, we can validate what language he's speaking or maybe his sentiment, right? If he's angry or upset. And those will actually come through inside of your ticket fields so that you can actually create uh, workflows off of these, right? If my sentiment is negative and there's a high confidence behind that, we might want to automatically route those tickets to a manager so we can um, get the users feeling better faster, right? Or maybe we just up the priority so that an agent can interact with them a little bit faster than other users. And again, just give them that, um, tender love and care that allows us to make sure that they leave happy. <laughs> Excuse me. Now, uh, all of these sentiments can actually be utilized in routing, but the other important piece here is that data we collected, right? That user ID can also be stored in uh, fields or the back end of the ticket. And using that, I'm now able to pull up information from our back end, right, through our custom apps. And that allows me to see all different information around John when his last 
purchase was, right? Um, maybe when he bought the software or how much he spent, I can get additional details. And again, this comes to me right away without me having to ask John for more information uh, or additional details. And so as an agent, I can actually hit the ground running right away um, and try to start helping John resolve his issue. Um, so to do that, I have a couple different options. I could say, hey, uh, glad to talk. Let's see how we can help. And as you can see, while I'm typing that, we actually see on the end user side that a message is being curated for them. And when it comes through, they'll see it right away. Now, again, messaging is an asynchronous system. So if John here chose to leave, come back, or uh, go to a different part of the site uh, and return, all of his messages are gonna be right back where he left them and he can pick up the conversation. <clears throat> now, typing is great, but um, generally it's a lot faster if I have some pre-curated macros, right? So, um, if I want to get um, an escalation here, or if I have, you know, very standard workflows that uh, happen every time, I can actually employ that to increase my efficiency. So I'm going to say, um, I'm going to get you to our tax team. Uh, what does that sound? Uh, and again, as he's reading these, he might respond with, that sounds great. Audibly, I'm gonna hear that John's replied. Um, we're gonna get a notification um, both inside of the UI here. And if for any reason I was to leave the ticket and he replies again, I would actually get a update both in my agent home panel, which is essentially going to give me a live feed for messaging tickets, as well as a little counter on my uh, ticket or in my messaging updates that I have uh, new updates from John. So I'm gonna go ahead and run this macro to escalate to the proper team. This will let him know that uh, we're getting him to the right place. And again, the important bit of information to note here is you are not going to have to create a whole new set of macros just for your messaging system, right? We're an omni-channel service. And what that means is if I know how to escalate a ticket to the tax team over something like an email, I am now going to use the same macro for a call or a message ticket or a Facebook ticket or a WhatsApp ticket. Right. And so all of these uh, become very easy to onboard and um, uh, train agents as we move along. All right. Now, the thing that um, I do also want to touch on, because I think it is important to see a little bit of the back end here, is the concept of uh, how I set some of this stuff up. Now, on the back end, we're actually going to go into the bot I created. And when I edit this, what you'll notice is that I've actually only built one answer. It's my escape, right, for an end user to talk to a human. And that's kind of um, something where we could use specific language, set proper expectations, or even just thank John with his uh, name that he just gave us, right? So it all feels a little bit more conversational. However, this bot uh, actually supplied all of those generative answers from my articles um, automatically, right? I didn't have to create or um, build any kind of triggers or if someone asks this, then you should say that. 
Um, and that's the real power here, right? If you already have a uh, existing knowledge base that can act as the brain for the robot, or the bot, um, then it can analyze that and really get going right away. And of course, this wouldn't be anything without um, reporting. So we are actually going to give you reporting in a few different ways. Um, we'll give you a few insights right on the bot in terms of its you know, high level performance. And then we can also analyze it through things like explore and our QA methodology so that I can actually even go into my um, Zendesk AnswerBot data set here and see exactly how it's performing potentially across channels. All right, thank you for letting me demo this for you. And again, uh, as we get additional questions, we will be happy to answer them. Okay, awesome. So we covered a lot and I'm really happy that you could stay here with us, but we, if you're still having questions about, okay, I now understand what messaging is, but why is it different from live chat and how is it AI powered? So if you're still wondering that, let me quickly highlight some of the, the key advantages here. Zenness messaging really combines the speed of live chat with the flexibility of ongoing conversation. So customers can really engage on their own terms, whether they're asking for immediate help or they want to discuss something later. And with 24 seven AI powered support, you can address issues even when your AI agents are offline or when your human agents are offline. Messaging can also really expand your reach. So that allows you to answer questions on social channels like Facebook, WhatsApp, Plus, it in integrates seamlessly with Zendesk, so you get full access to advanced CX capabilities like omnichannel routing and automations. And upgrading to messaging isn't just enhancing your current service, it's positioning your team to leverage the latest innovations and deliver exceptional customer expectations with AI-powered service. So we talked about a lot of incredible features here today, and if you're asking yourself, where do I start based on what we were discussing? Because I went through a lot of the great values of it. Let's review some of these functionalities. So in the first level, I made sure to indicate you can screenshot this so you know what to turn on for yourself. But we talked about web widget, mobile SDK, default message responses, multi-brand where you can manage your business hours and responses based on the brand, and rich content elements like GIFs, files, emojis, whatever. Level two is more of like our social channels, Unity SDK if you're a gaming company, so you can have messaging on your gaming app, agent workspace, unifying your agent skills, more flexible conversation styles so you can decide whether you wanna enable ongoing conversations for your customers or if you just wanna stay and have only real time. And proactive messaging when you can reach out to a customer once they just go on your website and promote a sale or ask if they need any help with something. And then lastly, AI, where it really shines is in level three, which is access to AI agents and automated QA for AI agents, bot builder to build out flows to talk to your customers, gen AI for agents, which is something that we definitely like, demoed with things like summarize tool with our advanced AI add-on. And omnichannel routing is a great customizable tool to help operationalize your business. Sunshine Conversations is where we get more into those platform capabilities. And then lastly, some reporting and analytics. And I also want to make sure to cover what's coming down in for the remainder of the year. Um, I hope, fingers crossed, because as you know, roadmap items can always slip or change. So we have a lot of really great ones that I just wanted to shout out. We have wait time, vis like wait time visibility for customers. So this is like where if you're in messaging, they will be able to see real time queue time for them. So when they will actually have contact with an agent, multi conversations so they can have multiple conversations with your company based on like maybe they have two different orders, but they need to, they have different specialties. Then we have suspend visitors and messaging. So this is if someone is like spamming you, not a real customer, you can block their IP address. And then concluding conversations, this kind of mimics some capabilities with live chat. So you're able to end a chat on the agent side um, after some inactivity. 
and then social messaging channels for intelligent triage, and then one that is making an amazing return, which is Apple Messages for Business. And that one should be coming out shortly in the next couple months. But that's it for me on capabilities and functionalities that you can enable to have the best AI-powered messaging. So let's jump into your questions where we have some of our experts available. Perfect. Um, OK, we're going to go ahead and pass this off to Brett real quick before we um, move into the Q&A. Again, if you have any questions on what we're covering now or a follow-up question to a question you submitted that you see us answering, uh, feel free to go ahead and drop that in the Q&A chat. We still have experts working really hard to go ahead and address your questions. Um, with that being said, let's go ahead and kick off this uh, Q&A. Brett, would you love to get us started? I know you would. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, can everyone hear me OK? Absolutely. All right, perfect. Uh, thank you, everyone who submitted their questions ahead of time. And uh, I just want to apologize ahead of time if I do butcher anyone's name when I uh, announce them. So just bear with me and we will go ahead and get started. All right. So our first question is for Andre from Marcella. Is there an application within chat settings you can use without degrading CSAT? So uh, I've made a couple assumptions here. Um, if you're around, please feel free to clarify. Um, but in terms of enabling messaging, generally CSAT tends to go up. Um, you can validate that the user needs to go to the right place, get their answer resolved more quickly overall. And because we can also prioritize high priority chats over low priority ones, um, clients are generally less frustrated overall. Um, now, again, I I think that's what you meant. Um, if, if I've misunderstood your question, please let me know. All right, thank you. Our next question is for Hannah from Brandon. Will we be able to train intents on our own data soon? So this is a really good question. Um, you Right now we have the ability with an early access program for custom, custom intents available by the end of Q4, so not currently, um, And but there you'll be able to effortlessly, effortlessly, my goodness, capture all of your incoming requests by adding custom intents. Um, and alongside that, this enhancement is kind of an evolution of our request new intent feature. So if you haven't used it yet, it's when you're in the admin center and you're in the intent area, you're able to request one through Zendesk and we'll answer within a couple of weeks to approve an intent. So we're really exploring solutions to eliminate the need for requests and waiting periods. Instead, customers will be able to add their own custom intents directly within the product with no wait time. So yeah, we're expecting that by end of year. All right, thank you. Next question is for Hannah again. Is this included in the Zendesk Advanced AI subscription? Yeah, so just like with chat, messaging is actually included in the suite, but also like chat, AI will kind of cost resolutions either with us or someone like Ada. So um, if you're talking specifically with something like AI agents that has like a resolution based pricing, but if you have more questions like specific to pricing, I recommend talking to your AE to find out more information. Great, good question. This question is for Arpin and Andre asked by Rhea. Why are AI vendors no longer supported like ultimate in messaging? I think that one meant uh, classic chat, not messaging. Um, Yes. Um, so the idea is that um, we upgraded our architecture here, right? Um, we looked at doing this over uh, our classic chat platform, and it would have taken a significant lift and uh, changed some very core things. Um, it was easier to kind of create a new uh, experience that kind of supported the vision that we wanted to have. Um, so that is to say, we're kind of all in on messaging and we're really trying to make sure that, uh, as we develop and create these really cool workflows, um, we're aiming to be able to do that, um, AI included on messaging, not necessarily live chat. 
Got it. And in the post event summary, we'll be sure to clarify that as classic chat. All right, our next question is for Arpan and Andre again. We want to use both chat and messaging. How do I set this up without causing issues with our chat? Yeah, I can take this one. So um, when it comes to essentially using both chat and messaging, uh, the key thing to note is uh, identifying the right channels on which messaging can be enabled. Uh, the way you can look at channels is a combination of uh, brands and you know traditional channels of communication, which could be social messaging or the native or native messaging integration. Uh, so the approach should be uh, to create brands and then start rolling out messaging brands by brands. Uh, that way you can, number one, uh, see how messaging performs in real uh, action. That's one thing. Second thing is that you'll also be able to refine your workflows that uh, is more fine tuned towards uh, messaging as a product. Uh, I also wanted to call out that incrementally, uh, we didn't provide good support on social messaging channels when it comes to chat, uh, whereas in case of messaging, we provide very integrated experience on social messaging. So this uh, chat to messaging usage in parallel should also be built around how social messaging can be brought into the umbrella. All right. Thank you, Arpan, for that answer. Um, we will go ahead and move on to the next question, which is for you as well from Danny. How does messaging detect the end user's language? Yeah, so end user language detection um, happens primarily with what, through browser settings. Um, and in case there is a mobile SDK integration, then it comes from the language that's set on the mobile SDK itself. So it's uh, the way we can think about it is more of a system read or interpreted information. Um, do note that uh, language does play a very important role when it comes to messaging. Uh, there are areas of uh, AI agents or bots where this language can be used uh, to fine tune your bot experience. Similarly, you can use language to run your proactive messages. And this again, language detection is useful while doing the uh, real time automatic translations uh, for the agents or the conversation between agents and end users. Great, thank you. Next question for Andre from Krista. Can proactive messaging be triggered by user actions in a page? Yes, is the short answer. Um, so we do have a way to trigger proactive uh, pop-ups and messages um, out of the box. Um, that primarily relies on uh, the customer hitting a URL or doing something like that. Um, if you want something more advanced, like them clicking a button and something happens, um, there's a set of APIs that we can use to make that happen. All right. Next question for you, Andre. Are there any AI intents for proactive messaging, any AI messaging bot recipes that you would recommend? Um, so a lot of it has to do with your setup. Um, when you proactively reach out to an end user, um, and again, I'm, I'm going to be making an assumption here that we're using our, our normal bot. Um, but um, the way you've set it up and the way you've asked for that bot to interact with the end user um, can basically decide the success, right? If you set the expectation of, hey, uh, ask me questions, or I see you're hanging out on this page for a little bit too long. Do you have a question I can answer? Prompting them to engage and then offering them some structured messages in your workflow that says, well, I'm actually confused about X, Y, or Z uh, as part of your block flow can kind of um, drive that adoption and make sure that you guys are, um, I don't like to talk about it as conversions, but that that's basically what it is, right? Is making sure that the user engages with the widget. Awesome. And any resources that we have available to these questions, we'll be sharing in the post event summary as well. So you will all have access to those. Next question for Arpin, how can custom fields be linked with AI agents? Yeah. So, uh, Essentially, we do support uh, custom fields uh, to be linked uh, to AI agents. So as you could see in the demo itself, uh, in the 
board builder, you could see a step around ask for details. Um, under this ask for details step, you can map custom ticket fields. Uh, there's a limit of uh, eight ticket fields that you can create within a step. And um, these are the field that needs to be then filled by uh, the end user. Um, and it works exactly like the normal custom ticket fields. Once the conversation goes to an agent, uh, this field will be populated on the basis of the entry that is provided by the end user. One thing I'll also add here, because I, I just realized I, I forgot to specifically show this. Um, but in my demo, we also covered uh, AI intents as custom fields. So um, not just the summary field, but on my left side, we actually had an entire um, list of custom fields devoted to sentiment analysis, to language, right? And how sure are we about this answer that the bot gave? So if I think my um, end user is very upset uh, and the um, rating is above 60%, um, for how sure it is, right? Maybe that is a reason where I escalate the priority and get them help sooner. Um, workflows like that can also be enabled through here. Awesome, great question, Paul. Next question is for you, Hannah, from Miguel. How do we protect customer privacy? This is a really great question as well. So I'm also gonna make some assumptions here. So this is specific to AI, we're really committed to being transparent with our customers about how we train our, our models. So to take steps to avoid like algorithmic discrimination, my goodness, and only to use data over which we have very explicit permission. Our ML work is guided by the following principles. We really think that training uh, data must be de-identified to remove email addresses, numbers from our models and annotation resources our customers are actually able to opt out of training and we respect data locality in accordance with like, the regional data hosting policy and we respect data deletion. So early re like research and human annotator guidelines and we reduce the risk of bias. So as far as transparency and our own guidelines on data privacy and protection for your customers, we think it's really good for you to check out our trust center and you can do that by visiting zendus.com slash uh, trust dash center and we'll have a little bit more information on data privacy there. So I hope that answers your question. All right. Thank you, Hannah. And thank you, Miguel, for the great question. Uh, question for you, Andre from Daniel. How far can I triage a ticket apart from language or brand? Can I triage on a combination on the query and from the user fields? Yes. Um, so all of the custom fields you have in your account um, can generally be used uh, to either be offered to the end user to fill out or uh, through our kind of API, uh, you can automatically fill it out and use them for uh, combination of reporting, uh, tr triage, what I want to do with it. All right. Thank you. And thank you, Daniel. Next question for Arpen. What are the best steps to implement AI-powered messaging? And this question is from Bruce. Yeah, Bruce. So uh, as you could see, um, for AI-powered messaging, uh, we expect it to be your uh, advanced use case uh, in case of messaging. And uh, the best way for you to evaluate uh, AI capabilities is on two fronts. One is to focus on uh, implementing AI on the bot side of things, uh, which will help you um, basically uh, ship majority of your support operation load on the bot, which is available 24 cross seven. So that's one layer that you can ev evaluate. So that would primarily include uh, configuring your bot, uh, enabling auto replies, uh, using Gen AI capabilities in bots. Uh, that's one part of it. Uh, the second part of it would be more on the agent productivity side, which would be um, mainly focused on how can you make your agents more productive. So that's where the advanced AI capability comes in, in form of uh, uh, more or uh, in form of uh, better triage, uh, in form of um, um, uh, having a better options on the compose step itself. Uh, so it's a combination of these two uh, that one should think. Um, bot is definitely uh, something that you should uh, give it a head start, I would say. And then I think you can fine tune your uh, workflows to evaluate more advanced AI capabilities. 
All righty, great question there, and thank you, Arpin. Our next question is from Paul for Andre. Is it possible to only release messaging to a specific segment of customers? Uh, so, so again, yes, it is. Um, my argument, um, or the thing I will also mention here is that um, I would actually suggest uh, that you should release messaging to potentially all your customers, right? And we have very specific ways to cater um, different clients to different um, flows or uh, expectations, right? Your um, paying customers, for example, might be the ones that are offered an option to speak to an agent. All your trial customers or everyone else might be getting um, just articles right fed to them um and that again allows an ability to make sure that you're meeting your clients across all of your segments not you know um abandoning a, a sp specific subset great thank you next question for andre um what source does the ai pick up on when or on when a customer asks a question? Um, so again, the source material, uh, if we're talking about the most standard implementation we have, um, is knowledge-based articles. Um, the uh, bot will go through kind of your entire knowledge base. And uh, again, it's not keyword matching, um, that's not what we're doing here. We're intent matching. So if an article is talking about, as an example, getting started on something, right? And the customer asks a question about where should I begin? Normally those keywords would match, right? But the intents do. And that's why this can be uh, fairly powerful is it can account for things like misspellings, asking questions in different ways. Um, and through that, you don't have to set up um, a bunch of different ways to try and catch custom searches or anything like that. The bot will handle kind of um, that liaison process. Awesome, thank you. Next question for Arpin from Alexandra. How can I view the conversation the customer had with the chat bot if it doesn't escalate to an agent? Yeah, this is possible, and um, this can be done with the help of uh, insights dash dashboard that we provide uh, within the bot setup itself. So if you go to the bots um, configuration itself, you can see insights, and then you can look at the automated resolutions that are provided by the uh, bot itself, and then you can uh, review all those uh, conversation transcripts from your end. I might also jump in quick and um, plug our uh, QA system as well. Um, so we we do have a um, QA option who, the main purpose of it is to QA agents. However, it will also QA the bot interactions as well. So that might be another good option. All right, next question for Arpin from Winslow. Do bots use previous conversation context when answering new questions? Uh, yes, uh, they do. And uh, as you could see, uh, like in, in the bot itself, you have the conversation might be happening within a flow. Uh, so it does retain the context of a conversation. And even if a Gen AI is used, the context is preserved. All right, thank you. This question is for Hannah. What is the difference between AI agents and AI powered messaging? Yeah, so I think when you think about it, AI agents is a part of AI powered messaging and it's a big core component. It has that kind of bot functionality that helps deflect tickets for common issues and hand over tickets to human agents when they can't necessarily solve them. 
But AI agents is not the only part of AI within messaging and automation. So messaging also has automation as far as integrations with agent workspace. So more specifically, omni-channel routing as an example. So AI agents is a huge part of AI powered messaging in summary, but it is not the only part of AI in an automation. And um, as we talked to today, like that slide that I had up on a bunch of features that you can use based on like the levels that you're accelerating towards, um, there's, a, there's automation that's pretty much built into all of those levels. Awesome, great question. Our next question is for Andre from Jason. How do you decide when a conversation should be concluded? In particular, when it's an escalation, should we close the message and then create an escalation ticket? So this is something that has uh, changed based on uh, what we could do in the past, what we're about to be able to do. Um, so I'll kind of talk about um, with what's coming out shortly, um, what I think the, the best option is. Um, we're about to release uh, both uh, multi-conversations and the ability for agents to close the chat. Uh, this allows for uh, kind of two very different workflows um, where originally you might have heard that you could you know, close the messaging tickets and open up a new one to escalate or something like that. Um, an agent closing the conversation will no longer close the ticket, right? So I could say, hey, this conversation is over. Um, I'm going to now escalate this, and it essentially becomes an email ticket. Um, uh, in, in some instances, that might be a very good workflow. Um, the workflow that I personally think works best is um, more of an asynchronous workflow of multiple conversations, right? So this concept of as I'm talking to you, um, I can keep going on my current thread, current messaging conversation, or if I need to spin up a new question, if I need to talk to a different department, if I need to start over, right? I would um, kind of create a second thread or a third thread or however many you need, right? And now this channel becomes a lot more um, like emails, right? Where we can, we're not in a hurry to close the ticket or the channel or the conversation um, because we're worried that we have to create a new one and we can't do that. Um, it's more like, yeah, I could maybe have three email conversations going at the same time. And um, when both the agent and I agree that, yeah, it seems like the issue's solved, we will solve that ticket and um, it shouldn't be a big deal. Hope that makes sense. Awesome, thank you for that. Next question is for both Arpan and Andre. Uh, what or would AI be able to identify at some point the same end user with different accounts in order to merge them? Yeah, I can take this. Uh, yeah, so in a way, we support this with the help of authentication. So if end user is authenticated, uh, we can determine uh, what's the exact user that is uh, originating the uh, ticket or a query. And uh, that can be then mapped to the existing profile. Yeah. Um, the only other thing I'll add there is there could also be some additional options around um, Again, uh, how we implement the widget, um, both on the front end or the back end in Zendesk, right? So if we're noticing that um, we have lots of ways to merge stuff, it's just a matter of the exact use case because we don't want to merge anything accidentally. Um, it's It becomes a lot more difficult to unmerge, right? All right, great question. Next question is for Hannah. Can you distinguish between the add-on costs and the free AI functionality available? Yes, happy to help. Amanda, um, so I can't do this question full justice because I'm not a rep, but um, I will give like a short answer, which is if you have any questions on pricing, we really recommend talking to your contact at Zendesk. I, um, AI agents is a part of messaging. 
and it has resolution-based pricing. So what that means is that when a customer interaction is resolved exclusively by the AI agent, you're charged for that. But advanced AI is an add-on on top of messaging. So it's completely separate. And that is what has tools like Gen AI for agents or for knowledge base. So you should, if you have any questions that are specific to pricing, I recommend talking to your rep, but I hope I answered that. Great, thank you. Next question is for both Arpan and Hannah uh, from Layla. As AI becomes more advanced and capable, what features are on the roadmap for Zendesk to improve its AI agent to stay competitive? Yeah, um, I can answer this one. So we believe that our AI is constantly evolving and our roadmap really speaks to that. So one that I would personally want to shout out is we have QA coming out for AI agents, which is basically quality assurance. So we can analyze the quality of your AI agent. And that is, I think, set to launch this year or has launched. But if you have any specific questions on like AI capabilities and how we're bulking on our roadmap, we have a really great roadmap ahead of us. So I would also talk to your rep to have them present that to you. Like I'm looking at a slide with like five features for AI agents just coming out in the next couple quarters. Um, and also, if you have the time, you can apply to attend our AI summit on October 9th, which would talk a lot about more of our AI features and functionality and how we're hoping to um, embrace and constantly evolve our AI capabilities. Great, great question. And that is the end of our Q&A.